the portable generator, SDS would be the generator neutral is isolated from the utility neutral. A non-SDS is where the generator neutral remains connected to the service neutral. In the setup I have up here, the Westinghouse generator and the transfer switch, the generator has a floating neutral. And because the neutral is not switched by the transfer switch, it remains connected to the utility. This is a non-SDS setup. So essentially this generator becomes part of the building's bonding and grounding system. In this next slide I have up, it gives you NEC's requirement for transfer switch which is so NEC 702.5 the equipment shall be listed, designed, and installed so as to prevent the inadvertent connection of any other sources of supply. So what the NEC is telling us is this transfer switch has to be listed and operate so that there would never be an interconnection between generator power and the utility power at the same time. So with this non-SDS setup that we have, the neutral to ground bond is staying at the service per 25024A5. The generator remains connected to that same service neutral through the cord that comes with this kit. So the cord has two hots, a neutral, and a ground equipment ground in it. And when we connect that cord from the generator to the inlet, we end up getting the proper bonding and grounding through the service, through the utility service. With this particular setup, with the transfer switch that we have that does not switch the neutral, we needed a floating neutral generator in order to make this work. If you had a portable generator that actually had a neutral to frame bond, so you had the neutral and equipment ground bonded together, you would create objectionable current through the EGC, the equipment grounding conductor, and the neutral. You could end up with stray voltage on the frame of the generator on normally non-current carrying conductive surfaces. Now, this is the inlet that we installed for this generator. And this inlet connects to the transfer switch, which is inside the building. So this is how we wired that inlet. And you can see, obviously, you have the two hots in a neutral, but also very importantly, you have the equipment grounding conductor. So we're bonding the metal on this enclosure, but also you can see the equipment grounding conductor is part of the plug assembly. And then it's also going into the building with the two hots in the neutral. So this is the junction box for the transfer switch. So you're just seeing that we have the connection of the two hots, the neutral, which are going off to the panel, the equipment grounding conductor is bonding the case. So we're maintaining that bonding and grounding path from the inlet. Okay, in this next slide, you see the transfer switch and then you see the panel. But also what's happening here is the system neutral and the equipment ground is coming into this panel and it's going to the neutral bus and you have a green screw bonding the case to the neutral bus. So if there's a fault to any non-current carrying conductive surface, it's going to work like any other fault would work. It's going to hit the equipment ground and conductor and it's going to be a low impedance path back to the source, back to the generator. And you're going to get a high current because everything is bonded and grounded properly back to the generator, which is going to trip the main breaker on the generator. If you're interested in the exact equipment I use for this setup, I'll leave links in the description for the generator and for the transfer switch. If you want a more detailed breakdown, you can go to my site, buildingcodegeek.com, where I break everything down in more detail.